So last night in the NHL, we had a massive deal where Elias Lindholm was sent over to the Vancouver Canucks. In the trade, the Calgary Flames are going to be picking up two young prospects here, a first rounder for 2024, a fourth rounder for 2024. That's conditional, but we're still going to be adding into the deal and Andre Kuzmenko. So you might be looking at this deal right now and think, where is Kuzmenko? He's one of the main pieces in this deal. Well, I want to make sure this deal went through. So I already sent Kuzmenko over to the Calgary Flames. So technically we're going to count him as part of this trade, but right now it's just going to be Lindholm for the two prospects, a first rounder and fourth. By Vancouver accepting this deal all the right pieces have gone from Vancouver to Calgary all the right pieces from Calgary have gone to Vancouver and now it's time to rebuild the flames and if we're being completely honest here things have not gone the Calgary Flames way the past couple seasons now you lost Johnny Hockey you lost Matthew Kachuk you lost Elias Lindholm now nobody wants to stay in Calgary the only people that want to stay in Calgary right now are the players that are getting overpaid that's not a good sign I mean you do have some nice pieces here on the defense Mackenzie Wieger Rasmus Anderson Noah Hannafin and then in between the pipes you do have Jacob Markstrom here and you have a young Dustin Wolf in the system the plan for the rebuild here Dustin Wolf is going to be starting in the NHL next season Markstrom's probably going to get traded and we have to give Dustin Wolf as many reps as possible however there is going to be one rule in this rebuild so normally in five-year rebuilds such as this I don't have any rules but we are for this one Jonathan Huberto and Nazem Kadri you guys have to be here until your contract expires I believe you both have more than five years left on your contract you're going to be here for the entire rebuild Normally, I'm not the guy to do realistic rebuilds, but I feel like for this scenario, Jonathan Huberto and Awesome Kadri have to be here the entire time. And more than likely, Kuzmenko is probably going to be here the entire time as well. So I think I've done enough yapping here. So far, thanks for the Calgary Flames. Definitely haven't gone to plan. This team should have won a Stanley Cup by now. I'm just going to keep it a thousand. For the longest time, I always said the Calgary Flames, they're one piece away. They're one piece away. They're one piece away. This team was always one piece away for like eight years. And it just never happened. They never got together. They never won a Stanley Cup. And to be completely honest, I actually said that with the Vancouver Canucks. Looking at that team, I always thought they should have been better than what their record was. But they finally got together this season, one of the best in the entire league. So shout out to the Vancouver Canucks. They're doing things right. Meanwhile, Calgary, it's not looking good. While the season simulates, this is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm trying to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers by the end of the month, so if you haven't subscribed already, you should do that right now. Okay, so I was trying to keep this video semi-realistic by keeping Huberto and Nazem Kadri here, but so far things have not gone to plan. We're not a good team, that's no surprise. We're 24th in the entire league, but the Vancouver Canucks are 23rd. I gave them Elias Lindholm and somehow they got significantly worse. So yeah, we're going to have a decent pick in the upcoming draft. To be fair though, Kuzmenko's look pretty good here. Jonathan Huberto, 56 points in 64 games. Nazem Kadri, 55 points. That's definitely an outlier. Bro has 30 goals at the 62 game mark. What is going on here? If he picks up 40 goals in the first year of this video, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like that's going to make absolutely no sense. Meanwhile, Jacob Markstrom, 27 wins here, a 906 and a 318. And then Danny over here. Yeah, we're not going to talk about these numbers. We're going to pretend they don't exist. An 860 and a 470. That is something. All right, so I'm cooking up a deal here with the New Jersey Devils. We're going to send over Jacob Markstrom their way. That's going to give them their number one goaltender. We're also going to be sending over Noah Hannafin because we're trying to pick up Siegenthaler here. He's got five years left on his contract at $3.4 and that's an incredible deal for an 85 overall. Also, Dawson Mercer, he'd be a nice young piece to the team here. He's only 22 years old. He's definitely fitting the timeline for what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to offer this package over. I'm expecting them to say no. You know what? I think a couple draft picks can make the difference here. Now, I'm hoping I don't have to throw in a ton of draft picks here but i think a third rounder could be the difference maker we're going to offer that over they're still saying no so a third and fourth rounder and you know what we're going to use vancouver's fourth rounder that's going to be more than enough to get this deal done so just like that we got siegenthaler we got dawson mercer we're ready to roll and I think that's probably going to be our only trade because I don't think we have anyone else on expiring contracts other than Noah Hannafin, and we just shipped him out. I know Jacob Markstrom still had two seasons left after this one, but you know what? We got to get Dustin Wolf those reps early. All right, I was completely capping. We still have to trade Chris Tanev. I don't know where we're going to send him, potentially the Boston Bruins, but he's also going to be getting traded here. The man that has been in trade rumors for the past two months, I completely forgot was on an expiring deal. L stick on the ice hockey knowledge right there. So our next deal is going to be sending Chris Tanev over to the Edmonton Oilers at 50% retained. We're going to be picking up Broberg, a good young defenseman, and Dylan Holloway, a good young forward. That should definitely help the timeline here, but unfortunately Edmonton's going to be saying no to the deal. We already know a seventh rounder could probably be the difference. 
So I'll throw a seventh rounder into this deal. I doubt that's actually going to be enough. It's probably going to have to be a sixth and a seventh. But you know what? We'll do what we have to. So Tandev at 50% retained. A sixth and seventh from the Calgary Flames is going to be sent over to Edmonton. They're still saying no to this. I really thought a sixth and seventh would have been enough. Here's a fifth from the Chicago Blackhawks as well. We're not going to have too many picks for the upcoming draft. But you know what? We're getting some solid players here. And what's a fifth and sixth rounder really going to be when it comes to a player? A seventh D potential defenseman? I'd rather get guys like Dylan Holloway and Broberg. So with those deals completed, it would simulate to the end of the season and hope this team completely tanks and we get the first overall pick. That's part two of the plan suck for the next 20. With my luck, this team's going to win 20 straight and we're going to make the playoffs and get swept in the first round. That would be the most fitting way to end this first season. Okay, things seem to straighten out after the trade deadline, not meaning we were good, but the Vancouver Canucks were. They finished 12th in the entire league. They're making the playoffs. That's going to make the rebuild a bit more realistic because that means that draft pick isn't going to have a ton of value. Calgary, 24th in the entire league here, 37, 35, and 10. We didn't have a great offense and our defense was even worse. I'm not overly surprised the goals against got worse because we did trade away Jacob Mark okay respectfully kuzmenko great year yeah caught you did your thing huberto not too bad blake coleman 71 points 32 goals 39 assists for 71 points your career high in points 38 you picked up 32 goals six goals shy of your career high in points how does that even happen i mean i'll take it because that means his trade value is going to be a bit higher and we're going to get some more assets for him and meanwhile danny here i guess he was the only goaltender that played for us eight wins nine losses two ot a 901 to 334 these numbers are actually pretty good considering what yours were at the trade deadline you were probably playing like a 920 goaltender it's not too bad i mean granted i don't really care too much about what the goaltender numbers look like edmonton's winning a stanley cup beating the carolina hurricanes in six games so shout out to the edmonton oil y'all finally want a stanley cup with your team meanwhile the vancouver canucks they're losing in the first round so i think that means from vancouver it's probably going to be around the 21st overall pick meanwhile when it comes to our pick we're praying that somehow jumps to number one so let's get ready for the draft lottery results here we gotta jump to the number one overall pick and the calgary flames they're not going to be getting lucky here it looks like we're going to be securing the ninth overall pick ninth overall isn't necessarily the end of the world so i guess i'll take it so with the ninth overall pick the calgary flames can be selecting parzak here medium elite potential 71 overall i've drafted him in a few videos so far and he's definitely played for my team in a lot of them we already know this man develops into a great player and with our 20th overall pick from the vancouver canucks we're going to be selecting andrew basha here medium top six potential he's a great playmaker there's been a couple videos where he's developed into a really good player so hopefully that happens again today but that one's not guaranteed like parzak okay i did not realize how many players we had on expiring contracts we have 17 rfas yeah we have a lot of players to bring back here i mean granted some of these guys have ahl potential and they won't be rejoined the team but he even still 17 rfas is wild so let's get started here with the extensions and we're going to start with dawson mercer we'll do 1.85 for the next four years i'll keep him around for the rest of the rebuild now dylan dubay on the other hand we're not going to be bringing him back for reasons that have nothing to do with hockey yeah we're just going to release him no comment on that situation jacob pelche i'll give you a four-year deal as well we'll keep you around you're a pretty good young player we'll do 1.8 for the next four years that's going to be another cheap contract if you can develop into like an 85 overall player then that'll definitely be worth it basically everyone i'm signing at this point i want to try to keep for the rest of the rebuild dylan holloway three years on two-way contract i will not complain about that deal whatsoever broberg i'm also going to do a four-year deal with you here we'll do 1.7 for the next four years i'm going to try to play you on the second line that's actually a lot i'm going to send you to the ahl i'm going to allow you to play top line minutes in the ahl and then next season i'll bring you onto the team because you need a couple more years to develop i'm gonna be honest now a guy like shellington isn't necessarily the worst case scenario here but also 5.5 million for an 83 overall that's not the move so shellington i'm gonna let you walk should have i traded you at the deadline absolutely but sometimes we make mistakes out here we're not perfect so when it comes to dustin wolf's extension here we're gonna go for a four-year deal at probably 3.2 million he's gonna be our goaltender for the next four years i'm not 100 sure if he's gonna be our starter next season that's actually a lie he's definitely gonna be the starter i'm gonna force him into the number one spot if that means we have to bring in a 77 overall backup i'll do what we have to but dustin wolf he's the guy for us so i re-signed everyone i want to and everyone on this list right here is going to be walking to free agency that includes these two goaltenders right here so we've got through the re-sign phase and there's a few extensions we have to give out here majapani you're not going to be one of them i don't plan on bringing you back to the team next season so we're going to be training you away pretty quick here sharon govich on the other hand you're definitely going to be returning to the team maybe not because this contract's a bit wild i'm not giving you five million dollars you actually might be leaving as well connor zary are you going to be reasonable here i'd like to do a four-year deal with you yeah i can definitely do 1.8 for the next four years an incredible deal for you and i actually think you might be playing on the first line next season you never know coronado is another guy i'm going to give a four-year extension due here we'll do 
25 for the next four years. I've given out a lot of contracts that are high risk, high reward moves, but I think a lot of them are going to work out for this team. So we are going to bring some guys in through free agency and we're going to be starting with Kevin LeBanc. We'll do 2.7 for the next three years. It's a bit more than what he's asking for, but he's going to be a good piece to the fourth line. Another player we're going to be bringing to the third line here is going to be Beauvillier, but we're actually going to save a bit of money here. We'll do 2.7 for the next three. Hopefully he signs the contract. And to finish off free agent signings, Labushkin, this is actually a bit much for you, but 3.4 for the next two years, you can hold it down the third pairing. Okay, so Labushkin is going to be a massive L man series, not going to be accepting the contract. Beauvillier is, Kevin LeBanc is. It actually kind of sucks that we didn't get Labushkin. I am not making this trade. Do not ask me for another trade again for the rest of the video, Chicago. Y'all are bugging. Now, Boston, I like what you're offering me here. I ain't going to lie. Blake Coleman in a third round pick for the Linus Allmark. Now, I did say Dustin Wolf is going to be the goaltender for us, but Boston's offering me this package. Allmark's 30 years old. We would need him for the next four years at an 88 overall. This isn't necessarily the worst deal in the world here, but I'm going to be saying no. I'm definitely going to regret this. But we're rocking with Dustin Wolf. He's the man for us. So instead of Labushkin, we'll go with Chadfield here. 2.1 for the next two. So this is the trade we're going to be doing with Majapani. But we're going to be retaining 50% of his salary in order to make the contracts work. And we're going to be throwing in a third round from the Vancouver Canucks that we got in a deal a while ago. I don't even know when we got this third round from Vancouver, but apparently we did. And we're going to be picking up Alex Wenberg. And he's going to be holding it down the third line here. I guess a third rounder is going to be enough. So we'll throw in a fourth rounder for 2026. I believe that this should be enough to get Alex Wenberg. When I offer that over, they're saying yes we got the deal done now i'm not gonna lie poirier this is an incredible contract 1.5 for the next four years i've signed so many contracts in this video under two million dollars and that explains why we have 15 million dollars in cap space the reason i didn't bring in a star player during free agency well number one the best guy available was joe pavelski and i'm not bringing in joe pavelski on a long-term deal but we still need to bring back kuzmenko sharon govich we might be bringing him back next season and then wenberg i would love to bring him back to play in the third line next year those three guys together is probably going to be about $13 million. That's going to leave us with $3 million left over. We can't be spending a lot of money like crazy and then tying it down to long-term deals and then lose all three of these guys. That can't happen. So here's what the team's going to be looking like for year number two here. We're going to be giving Connor Zeri some opportunities on the top line. He's going to be playing with Kuzmenko and Huberto. On the second, we got Blake Coleman, Kadri, Sarangovich, Mercer, Wenberg, and Pelichet are going to be holding it on the third line. While on the fourth, we got Beauvillier, Backlund, and LeBanc. Three guys here that have pretty good line fits. They're going to be holding it down gain a plus one overall boost i feel like that's not too bad of a line right there defensively mackenzie Weger and rasmus anderson are gonna be our two top guys then we got broberg and siegenthaler and then poirier and chatfield we have a good mix of offensive and defensive talent here so i think that's gonna help a lot for our defense however we do have one issue dustin wolf's only an 81 overall i'm not banking on this team winning a stanley cup this season that's for sure we're probably gonna be one of the worst teams in the league just because we don't have a great goaltender however he's gonna get a lot of reps this season he's gonna develop into an 85 by the beginning of next year then we're really going to be competing for Stanley Cups. I mean, that's the plan right now, but we did get offered the Linus Allmark for Blake Coleman in a third round pick. So if I have to trade Blake Coleman in a first round to get Shesterkin, I'm probably going to do that. The odds of that happening incredibly low, but you just never know. I never thought we would have got offered Allmark, so anything can really happen out here. Okay, I really thought the Calgary Flames were going to be a better team this season. That did not happen in the slightest. I think we're actually one of the worst teams in the entire league. We're 22nd with a 30, 28, and 6 record. We can score goals, and we allow a lot of goals. Almost almost four per game. Linus Allmark, you might be coming to the team. We got to solve this problem fast. Okay, so maybe it's not the defense that's the problem. Maybe it's the offense. Huberto minus 18, Kuzmenko minus 20, Zeri minus 21, Coleman minus 15, Kadri minus 20. So the forward core here absolutely sucks. Does anyone have a good plus minus? LeBanc, Bovillier, Backland. This is actually a pretty good fourth line. I'm happy we have these guys for the next few years. I mean, Backlund is 35. He might not be here too much longer. But yeah, at least we have some guys that are playing pretty good. The goaltending numbers I'm very scared to look at. Dustin Wolf, 24 wins, 3 shots, a 903 and a 316. This actually isn't bad. Fodara, on the other hand, 6 wins, 14 losses, an 884 and a 401. Bro, you suck. Straight up. Okay, Dustin Wolf, your numbers actually aren't as bad as I thought they would be. Vladar, I don't even know how this is possible. Our team's better than what our record shows because our backup's playing way too many games and bro absolutely sucks. However, we probably could make a few moves here. No, like real talk, Vladar's holding us back. We are not that bad of a team. But man, does that dude suck right now. So if we want to be competitive in the next few years here, we got to make some risky moves. Sharon Govich, I'm sending you over to the Chicago Blackhawks. We're picking up Gurionov in a second round pick. Gurionov, the plan is for you to play on the second line here. 
I guess that package wasn't enough, so I'll throw a fifth rounder in this deal. I would like to get that second rounder back. Okay, that's actually a great deal. Sharon Govich is gone. Now we got to trade Blake Coleman. And I said that we need a playmaker. You know who's a good playmaker? Zach Benson. He's an 81 overall. He might even play on the first line for us. I don't care what line you play on. We need some help on this team. We have to take on Jordan Greenway's contract to make this work. Coleman and two third rounders. I don't think that's going to be enough, but I'm still going to offer it over. They're saying no. What else do I have to throw in this deal? Obviously, I'm not including our first round pick, but that also might not be the worst idea in the world. We don't own our first round pick. Since when do we not own our first round pick? Okay, we have to be good here. So I'm going to trade this Florida panther pick away take out one of these third rounders florida is a good team right now okay i did not know we didn't own our first round pick i was okay with sucking up until this point because now i know we don't own our first round pick we gotta turn this season around real quick all right, so maybe we can pick up Lav from here. I don't even think this is going to be a possibility, but I'm still going to offer it over. Okay, we're just a bit low here. We got to throw in a seventh rounder and we'll get the deal done. I'm not necessarily against this deal right here. Lafreniere, he's a good young player. He's 86 overall right now, so he's going to develop into something. He's tied down for the next three years at like $4 million. That's a good move for us. So we've made a few changes here. We're going to have Lafreniere, Zeri, and Kuzmenko on the first line. And then it's going to be Huberto, Kadri, Gurionov on the second. Gurionov, we have to re-sign. We also have to re-sign Kuzmenko here. Some tough decisions are going to have to be made because we don't have a ton of cap space. Actually, that's a lie. I think we have like $13 million to work with. We're going to be perfectly fine here. As long as players want to come back, like if Kuzmenko doesn't want to come back, then it makes giving him an extension way harder. So what's Kuzmenko going to be looking for? Okay, we're straight. We have $23 million to work with and he only wants six. Yeah, we're fine. So Kuzmenko, here's the contract I'm giving you. It's going to be 5.8 for the next five years. That's actually an amazing deal, especially since you're playing first line minutes. Guryanov, what are you looking for? 4.3, we can make that happen. But 4.3, I'm actually not going to make happen. We're going to do 4 million for the next three years. I can make this happen for sure. And to cap it all off, Wenberg, 3.75 for the next three years will lock you down for the rest of the rebuild. I actually think we have a really good team here. I'm also contemplating sending Vladar down to the AHL because he sucks so much and we don't own our own first round pick. But you know what? That's perfectly fine. We have the core here. Eventually, they're going to turn it around. Okay, we were so bad this season that I'm not going to scroll through every single team. We're actually just going to reverse it because it's a lot quicker for me. 26 in the entire league, 38, 38, and 6. Offense couldn't score to save their life, but we are really good at allowing goals. We might have had the worst defense in the entire league here. It's second worst to Buffalo. 3.66 allowed. That's going to change next season. That's a fact. I mean, Kuzmenko wasn't that bad. He picked up 70 points this season. We're going to ignore the plus minus. Huberto, 63 points. Lafreniere, what'd you do since joining the team? 18 points in 18 games. I definitely can't complain about that. Connor Zeri, what were you up to playing some big first line minutes? Why did I even bother checking your numbers when I can just look right here? 54 points. Gurionov, what'd you do? That's who I really wanted to check out. 13 points in 18 games. I'll take it. The plus minus on this team, definitely not good in the slightest. The goaltending numbers, I'm really curious to see those. Yeah, this ain't it. We might be trading for a goaltender. Dustin Wolf, if you're up to an 85 by the beginning of next season, we might bring you back. However, we definitely have to make some changes to that backup role. Bro played in 33 games and had 882 and a 410. Nobody can save those numbers. No, like honestly, those are actually some wild numbers. Four goals per game and you played in 30 some games. It's not like you only allowed four goals once or twice. You averaged allowing four goals a game. Vancouver made to the Stanley Cup final, but unfortunately they're going to lose to the New York Rangers. That team can just never succeed in the Stanley Cup final. It's a tough luck for them. But you know what? We got to get ready for the draft here. Never mind. No, we don't because we don't own our first round pick. But I am curious to see if that jumps up to the first overall pick. I guarantee Calgary pick becomes number one that would be the most fitting way to end this season and i think florida owns that pick so we're gonna see in the draft here for a second i actually thought our pick did jump to number one but it's actually minnesota via buffalo meanwhile our picks going to montreal and that's the seventh overall when did calgary trade their first round pick to montreal was it in the sean monahan deal i have absolutely no clue okay i drafted this guy with the expectation he was gonna have bottom six potential he actually has medium elite potential he's gonna be a good trade asset because he's not gonna have enough time to develop for this team he's gonna have a lot of trade value no that was a wild pick for us there is no reason we should have got a medium leap potential player there so there's gonna be no big deals handed out during the re-sign phase every single contract i offered was a two-way one the first guy we offered a contract to just said no i'm not coming to the team so you know what you don't want to join the team we're not bringing you back plain and simple 
All right, so thankfully we have a lot of cap space to work with here because we got to bring back Rasmus Anderson. He's one of the most important pieces to the team. We don't have a lot of good players here. We have a lot of role players, but we don't have superstars. And I think that's what's been hurting us the most. And Rasmus Anderson, this is gonna be a fair contract for you. $6 million for the next three years. For an 87 overall, I definitely can't complain with that. Another guy we're bringing back, Chad Field, 2.3 for the next two years. You're a good defensive defenseman. You fill your role in the third pairing. So I want to keep you here. Backlund, on the other hand, you're 36 years old. You're walking in free agency. I'm sorry to say. So far, nothing about this simulation has been realistic, but Mikel Granlin at 33 years old is up to an 88 overall, and he wants $11.7 million. Things have gotten out of hand here, because what's going on? 33-year-old Mikel Granlin, 11.7. This is why we don't make free agent signings. This is dumb. And even Brad Marchand, $11 million at 37 years old? This is absolutely ridiculous. We could bring back stick on the ice legend Sam Bennett, though. I mean, that's always an option. So I'm not going to lie, I would like to make one big free agent signing here, but there's nothing jumping out at me. Brad Marchand, he's 37. That's not happening. I mean, for one season, we could do it. Brad Marchand, could I sign you to a one-year deal at $11 million? I mean, that is quite expensive. You only fit on the fourth line here, so that probably doesn't make any sense. Backland, I guess I could bring you in for the one season. You fit on the top six. Yeah, sure, but I'm not giving you $11 million. I'll wait till your expected salaries dropped a bit because that's just wild. That's probably going to be the only free agent signing we do. We already have the entire team coming back. We have a lot of good young players that are going to continue to develop, so I expect the team's going to be better. However, we do have to make one signing here for a goaltender. So who's going to be our backup? Marc-Andre Fleury, you could be the guy for us. I mean, I wouldn't complain about that. Vanacek, but no, nah, we're going with Charlie Lindgren. St. Louis Blues legend Charlie Lindgren, $1.3 million. I'll give you more than what you're asking for. That's how valuable you are. Ain't no way somebody actually gave Backland $11 million. We're only eight days into free agency. That's wild. This has to be a joke. Ain't no way Ottawa's going to offer me Mikel Granlin for Uyghur and Siegenthaler. Y'all are bugging. I'm not trading with Ottawa for the rest of this video. So here's the plan. One last season of being mid. Zeri, Lafreniere, Kuzmenko on the first line. Huberto, Kadri, Gurionov on the second. Pelche, Wenberg, Mercer on the third. And then we're going to finish off with Kevin LeBanc, Backlund, and Beauvillier. We have a lot of great players on this team, but we don't have a superstar in the forward core, and I believe that's what's hurting us the most. Connor Zeri, he's 23 years old. He's going to continue to get better. He'll probably be up to an 86 next season. Kuzmenko, he's only an 86. I was hoping he'd be up to an 88 by now. Well, Lafreniere, he's definitely going to begin some X-Factors next season. I'm not worried about that. Defensively, we have so many good pieces. Uyghur, Anderson, Broberg, Siegenthaler, Poirier, Chadfield. No weaknesses here whatsoever. Everyone has pretty solid line fits. That's not a concern. Goaltending, that's not going to be a concern this season. Dustin Wolf's up to an 85 overall. Next season, he should be up to an 87. Whatever we do here, we got to allow the young guys to develop. We cannot rush the process. So this is the best season the Calgary Flames have had since we started the video. They're not good by any means, but they're at least in a wild card spot. 14th in the entire league, 32, 26, and 6. The offense still sucks, but the defense, not that bad. I mean, that also sucks. Like, I mean, this team is just not good. I don't know what it's going to take for us to be number one in the entire league. In free agency, we just have to pray that there's going to be one elite talent available. And if they're available and ideally a sniper, we're adding them to the team. I don't care what it costs. I mean, yes, I do. If they want like 15 million, then we're not doing that. But we got to get a superstar on this team. At least I can say these numbers look better. Lafreniere, 55 points. Guriano, 48. Kuzmenko, 47. He's got 22 goals here. Kadri, 44. Huberto, 42. I mean, I'm expecting you guys to do better because we're paying you a lot of money. But I mean, hey. If you're not going to produce, that's just the way it is. Dustin Wolf, this season is a lot better for you. 28 wins, four shots, and 914 to 294. If we could score, we would be one of the best teams in the entire league. But unfortunately, for some reason, this team can't score. We are at the trade deadline, though, and we are a competitive team. We're probably going to make the playoffs. So, do we trade for a sniper? That could be the move here. Tower Toffoli, are you going to be the answer for us at 33 years old? We might have to bring you back to the team. You know what? I want to take that back. I made a big speech at the beginning of this season that we're not going to rush the process. Process. And what am I trying to do right now? rush the process. We know we're not winning a Stanley Cup this season. Let's not make a stupid move. Let's hold on to all of our assets and next season, then we'll make the big moves. However, Jake DeBrusque, 84 overall, you're a young player, so I could trade for you. That wouldn't necessarily be the worst move in the world here. What lines do you fit on? Okay, none of them. Never mind. Jake DeBrusque, he won't be joining the team here. We're not making any trades. We're going to ride out this season. Ideally, we get into the postseason as a wildcard team, but next season with all the young guys developing the way they are, 
then we'll be ready for a Stanley Cup, and that's a fact. If I get to next season and none of the young players develop, we're making about 18 different trades to bring in guys that can win now. But you know what? I trust the young core here. We know we can't rush the process. Let's just ride this season out. We lost three straight games. We lost four straight. We've lost a lot of games in a row. We're not making the playoffs. All right, you know things are getting serious. Stick on the ice statement right now. Conference finals next season. That's the minimum. Nothing less than the conference finals will be accepted. 23rd in the entire league here 37 35 and 10 we're going to score goals next season and the defense it's going to be pretty good as well i mean what's 311 goals per game that's not necessarily the worst in the entire league we're mid we're mid when it comes to defense but we're one of the worst when it comes to goal scoring we might have been the worst fourth last we solved the goal scoring problem and we're best in the entire league easy and how are we going to solve the goal scoring problem we're bringing in a superstar plain and simple we need some elite talent on this team dustin wolf 33 wins five shots a 914 to 296 I don't know how I feel about these numbers. I mean, these aren't bad. Like a 914 is absolutely fantastic. The goals against isn't good, but we're also not playing defense in front of you. We're going to trust the process though. You're an 85 overall. Hopefully you're up to an 86 by the beginning of next season. Maybe have an X factor or two. If you don't though, we might be making some changes to this team and you might be traded. In case you give a crap, Vegas is winning the Stanley Cup and the New Jersey Devils are getting swept. So it sucks to be them. Couldn't be us because we're not making the playoffs. All right, draft lottery. Do us good here. Where are we going to be drafting? ninth overall that is not good you have to allow me to jump in one of these drafts from like nine to one so this draft has been absolutely abysmal so i'm trading for a future fifth round pick we had two selections in this draft one of them a medium top six player can't really complain about that the other one we're not going to talk about it wasn't good let's just say that also did i say we had the ninth overall pick we actually had the tenth overall thought i mentioned that so plain and simple here if you're not accepting a two-way contract you're not going to be joining this team or if you have ahl potential one of the two all right so we already know what's on the line this season and we got to make the Stanley Cup final, plain and simple. Kyle Connor, you're available here. I'll give you $13.8 million. It's a million dollars more than what you're looking for, but we're incredibly desperate right now. We need you on this team. You're going to be playing on the first line alongside Lafreniere. Connor Zeri is also going to be there. Kuzmenko, I guess I'll drop you down to the second line. I don't even know what we're going to do here. I'm going to be completely honest. Hubro's dropped to like an 84. Kadri's like an 82 at this point. I said I wasn't going to trade those guys, so we have to hold on to them. It's going to be tough that's for sure Gabe Velarde I'll also bring you to the team here we'll do two years at seven million dollars that means we're gonna have to give up a first and third round pick do we do that do we give up a first and third round pick we might have to we're desperate here so I mean I'm gonna consider that so we are picking up Velarde but we got to clear up some cap space for him so we have to make a trade I haven't necessarily decided who we're gonna be trading away but it's gonna be one of our bottom six guys I think we'll do Anthony Beauvillier he's an 81 overall we're paying 2.8 million let's free up that cap space you're off to Arizona for a fifth round pick so we have great news here not only has Gabe Velarde joined the team because Winnipeg's not matching the offer, but we also got Kyle Connor. Two fantastic players. This is the last dance for this team. If we can't turn things around this season, I don't think we'll ever turn things around. Also, we can't use the excuse that we don't have a good coach because not only is my coach an A overall, but he has a 70% team fit. There's not much more we could ask for. All right, so we had a couple people develop some X Factors here. That's actually a lie. The only person that got an X Factors is Lafreniere. So the first line is going to be Lafreniere, Connor Zeri, Kyle Connor, Kuzmenko, Velarde, and Huberdeau are going to be holding it down the second. They're getting a plus four boost, while the top line is getting a plus three. The third line is not looking that great. Mercer, Kaji, Gurionov. I mean, it's not the worst in the world, but it's definitely not the best. And then Pelche, Wenberg, and LeBanc are going to hold it down the fourth line. Defensively, it's the same old suspects. Mackenzie Wieger, Rasmus Anderson, Poirier, Siegenthaler, Broberg, Chadfield, Chatfield's a defensive defenseman. He holds it down in the third pairing. I can't really complain too much there. He might have been minus four last season, but you know what? The team wasn't really performing in front of these guys. Like our forward core absolutely sucks. Meanwhile, Dustin Wolf, he's up to an 87 overall. We can win a Stanley Cup with an 87 overall. We need to turn things around this season. I feel like this is the best team we've ever had, even though Huberto and Kadri have both declined in overall. We have a ton of good young players here. Then again, I've also been saying we have good young players the past three years now and none of them have really developed as I was hoping. We got to hope for a miracle here. Not only do we have to be competitive this season, but next season we have to be even better. So this team better turn things around real quick. All right, I just want to point this out right now. December 10th, 2026. We're 11, 13, and 1. I just fired the coach and we're going to simulate up to the trade deadline and we're going to see how much of an impact a coach makes. We're not even going to stop here at the trade deadline because things are just going so bad for this team. We're going to get right to the end of the season and then I'm going to trade absolutely everyone away for the final year. And when I say everyone, that includes Jonathan Huberto and Nazem Kadri. This is absolutely ridiculous. Dylan Dubé, you are not joining our team. That is a fact. 
I don't know what is going on in this rebuild. The past like two, three weeks, I've been having a great time doing rebuilds. You know, nothing has gone really that wrong, but this Calgary Flames rebuild, this is worse than the Ottawa Sanders one. Like at least with Ottawa, we made the playoffs once in a while. This ain't it. The Calgary Flames just got so unbelievably lucky. We should not be in this position right now. 17th in the entire league, 39, 36, and 7. We're in the playoffs. We don't score goals and we don't play defense. How we made it to this point, couldn't tell you. Kyle Connor, you were a great pickup. I can't complain about this. 89 points here. Jonathan Huberto, 72. That's the most points you've had in a long time. Kuzmenko, 64. Velarde, 61. Connor Zeri, you only had 51 points. You haven't really developed as I was expecting. Nazem Kadri, you actually weren't that bad either. 58 points. Points. Some of these guys are still performing. I mean, Nazem Kodge has dropped to an 84 overall. He's going to be even worse next season. And Dustin Wolf, what did your numbers look like? 30 wins, three shots, a 909 to 298. Let's go on some miracle run here. There is no reason that we should even be in the playoffs. We have the Vancouver Canucks in the first round. I don't even know with this team anymore. So normally I would just simulate through the first four games, but we already know we're going to be losing here. So I'm just going to simulate the entire first round. We don't stand a chance against the Vancouver Canucks. Then again, we do have a 2 1 series lead. We're up 3 1 here. We're going to blow a 3 1 series lead. Never mind. We somehow got past Vancouver, and now we're taking on LA in the second round. I'm speechless. I really am. Now, there's no point stopping here. I guess simulate the first four games against LA. I mean, if we can stand a chance here, we actually might be able to make it to the conference finals. What is going on? We just swept the LA Kings. This isn't a fake video. The Calgary Flames just beat the best team in the Western Conference, and then they beat the LA Kings and we made it to the Conference Finals. We won 39 games and we're 17th in the entire league. Kyle Connor, are you scoring 18 points a game or something? No, Velarde has 16 11 games though. We should not be here. All right, so we've somehow made the Conference Finals here. I have no clue how that's even possible, but we're here and we might as well win. We're matching up against the Anaheim Ducks, which is probably the best matchup we could have gotten because they finished like either 15th or 16th in the entire league entire league. They were also a wild card team. They were not very good. Things are going our way right now. They really shouldn't be, but somehow they are. So can we sweep the Anaheim Ducks here and make it to the Stanley Cup final? It doesn't look like it. We won the first two, but then we're dropping the next two right after that. Game five is going to be a massive one. We're really going to make the Stanley Cup final here. We're really going to do that. Here we go. Game number six. We're not going to be able to close it out, but we have game seven. Game seven, a chance at the Stanley Cup final. We should not be here. So here we go. It all comes down to this. A chance making the Stanley Cup final. Things aren't looking good in the first period and things aren't looking good in the second. I doubt we're going to make a comeback here in the third period. Of course we are. We made it to the Stanley Cup final. You know what? I did some reverse psychology there. In my head, I was like, if I say we're going to lose in the third period, we're going to make the comeback and then win in overtime. For some reason, that logic worked. We're off to the Stanley Cup final. There is no reason the 39 win Calgary Flames should be in the Stanley Cup final right now. We're taking on the Florida Pan. Panthers. Alexi Lafreniere, you're him. 11 goals, 14 helpers, 25 points. Now we have to take on the 53 win Florida Panthers. I would say we don't stand a chance, but we didn't stand a chance in the first, second, or third round. So at this point, you have to believe in miracles. We're just going to simulate the entire final round here. If we somehow win this, okay, this game is broken. 39, 36, and 7 and we're Stanley Cup champions. We won in six games beating a 53 win team. This video isn't faked. I was really gonna upload a video where the Calgary Flames go five straight seasons without winning a Stanley Cup, and I was gonna go on some massive rant. But here we are, a 39 win team, 17th in the entire league, just won a Stanley Cup. There is no reason this should have happened. Lafreniere, 32 points. Kuzmenko, 30. Nazem Kadri, 29 points at 36 years old. You're an 82 overall. Huberto, 17 points. Everyone on this team performed. Dustin Wolf, these numbers must have been spectacular. 16 wins. Okay, sorry. I saw Charlie Lindgren's numbers and I started laughing. Bro had an 814 and a 677. Okay, he was not cooking in the slightest. But Dustin Wolf, he was pretty solid here. An 87 overall. He picked up an X Factor. No, but Charlie Lindgren's numbers just made me laugh. Bro played 44 minutes and was allowing 6.77 goals per game. That is a tough look. I don't know how this happened. Comment Lafreniere. This man picked up 14 goals and 18 assists for 32 points. We shouldn't have won, but hey, a win is a win is a win is a win, and we're going to take it.